Good morning, new Christians and everyone listening today. This is Julian and Spirit with us. Thank you for joining me today. And I have a little teaching today. Um, I ask the Lord to guide me and lead me. And it's amazing what he will give me to say that I never planned on, never thought of. It just comes And uh, it seems to be when I think I have nothing to say, that's when I have the most to say for him. He puts the words and the, the, the impressions in your spirit and puts the words in your heart and your mind. So um, he's really been impressing me about discipleship, that this program and podcast is mainly its main thrust is for you new Christians and you Christians that maybe ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you, but you never got any further. And um, I'm sure that happens a lot because there's a lot of quick evangelism on television, or you read a pamphlet somewhere, or you answered an altar call somewhere at, at some service somewhere, and you never got any further discipleship or mentorship or teaching as how to grow now and how to walk out your Christian faith. And that's what I believe God wants this program and this podcast to be. So that if you lead someone to the Lord, or you know some new Christian, that you can say, hey, you know, I don't know any books or anything, but there's this podcast and it's all over the place. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple podcast. It's on anchor. It's everywhere. All the major outlets. Now you can point them to my program that the Lord has just put on my heart to do as to unto his name, unto his glory, um, to, to teach his and feed his sheep, which I am a sheep. (laughs) I'm just an old sheep (laughs) that's been around and picked up a few things that I'm happy to share with you. So um, please share this program uh, to new believers and maybe old believers alike that haven't heard these things. So we live in an exciting time. We're right at the brink and the end of uh, this part of history as we know it. The Lord Jesus is coming back so soon because he says that, that when we see these signs that are happening all around us in the world today, in the news today, the bells and the alarms should be going off. This is it. We are in the end times. God is getting ready to wrap up history and he's getting ready to come back soon. He's delaying just to give the precious fruit of the earth time to come to be harvested. And those who believe in Jesus are the harvesters like you and me. And we need to go out and just share Jesus, simple faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, as an answer to sin, as the one who paid for sin and made a way for us to get back to heaven and back to a relationship with the Father as we were supposed to have in the Garden of Eden. We were supposed to walk with Him and talk with Him and just enjoy creation with Him. And He wanted to enjoy our friendship and He wanted the friendship of someone who was not uh, a puppet, but had free will and freely wanted to love Him and walk with Him and have a friendship with Him. How would you like a best friend that wasn't your friend because... They chose to be, and they liked you for who you were, but that you were forcing them somehow. Maybe you were having a chip implanted in them, made them into a robot, and now they have to act like they like you. Well, what kind of a friendship is that? It's no kind of friendship. And that's exactly why at such a cost to himself and to the Lord Jesus God the Father gave us free will because he wanted to be freely liked and loved by his precious people. He wanted someone to have a relationship with. Okay, so let's get on with our teaching today. Father, we just ask you to guide and direct this podcast and that you would um, fill me and with your Holy Spirit and the listeners and that you would just put my words in in. Put your words in my mouth, Lord, for them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. 
All right. First thing that I want to speak about is for new Christians, a big, big help. And again, I wanted to make a note here, side note. If you hear me speak about the same topics again, that say, oh, she said that in podcast two or whatever. Yeah, I am absolutely repeating things, maybe in a little bit of a different light, but teachers do that. And students like to, to learn things and they do learn things when they're repeated. I know for my own self, I have to hear things four or five times and, and I still get more out of it by going over it. So we're here to learn, not just to say something and then forget about it. So I will repeat things and I will emphasize things over and over again. Okay. So bear with me and, um, learn with me. Okay. So I am going to speak about how we can use God's word as a framework for prayer. If as new Christians, brand new Christians, you may not be comfortable talking to God, or you may not, you might say, oh, I don't know what to say and freeze up. And that's understandable. And we all start out like that. But as you get to, uh, to walk with the Lord and know how his tender, loving kindness, any little word that comes from his child's mouth, which is you and me, he just cherishes and he loves and he, he just, it says that he saves up our tears and our prayers, uh, in heaven. He, not a one of them is lost. He cherishes them. He saves them. He's sentimental. He keeps them. They mean a lot to him. He made us to commune with him. So he cherishes every word that you even attempt to say to him. But as a beginning kind of a template, which really helped helps me even to this day, I do it. You can take a passage, passage of scripture and use it as a template. And let me just, um, I may have done this in a prior podcast, but I'm going to do it again. Um, let's turn to Psalms and Psalm 51. Some Bibles call it chapter 51, um, but it's Psalm 51. And this is where David is really, he's so condemned and he's so um, contrite about his sin with Bathsheba. Um, And he knows he did such wrong and he knows that he put the sin and it's now blocking between him and the Lord. He doesn't have the joy of his salvation. He doesn't have that, that close friendship with the Lord. He feels it's missing. He's destitute and he's just so sad and upset and contrite about it. And this, if, if we go before the Lord and we are go- want to confess our sins and you just want a way to help it start to flow, um, we need to really confess our sins. I do it morning and night. And I think that's a good way to do it. Keep a short tab with the Lord. Always remember that. So this is how you can do it. All right. And I'm not going to do it. Take a long time. I'm going to go through it quickly because we need to cover a lot today. So if you open to that Psalm, you can, I'm going to paraphrase it on purpose to be as though I'm saying it from me to God and God absolutely loves for you to pray scripture. That's what I call it. Praying scripture, because you know, he, he says in his word, if we ask anything according to his word, he, we know that he hears us. This is right from the new Testament. I don't have the, the verse. I'm sorry about that. But, and let me say it again. If we ask anything according to his word, we know that he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, we have whatsoever we ask. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? So if you, in other words, if you pray using the Bible, using his own words, then we know that he, we're going to have what we ask for because he says so. Because his word is always according to his will. So here we go. So it starts out, Father, 
And if you don't see the words, that means I'm putting them in. But this is kind of how I speak to the Lord. Father, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Please blot out my transgressions. Please, Father, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, which is sin, and cleanse me from my sin. Father, I acknowledge my transgressions, and, I, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that I might, that you might be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. Father, behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Father, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you shall make me know wisdom. Hallelujah. Father, please purge me. That means cleanse me thoroughly with hyssop. And I shall be clean. And that refers back to the first Passover when the Jews, uh, when the last plague was going through Egypt and Moses told the people to put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost and their side posts with a, pe- with a branch of hyssop dipped in the the blood of the sacrifice, which is which was a picture of the coming Lord Jesus Christ sacrifice on the cross for sin. Um, so it says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Father, please make me hear joy and gladness. He, he was he hasn't heard joy and gladness in a long time because he's been very condemned about his sin that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. He felt so bad, he felt like his bones were broken. Father, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Father, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Father, restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Father, please deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Father, you don't desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You delight not in a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. And I'm going to stop there. Praise God. Is that a beautiful way to, to go through the confession? And then if there's anything specific that's on your heart, you can name it before God and trust that he will cleanse you the minute you ask for forgiveness and say you're sorry and you repent truly. That very second, he washes you clean. He forgives your sin. He casts it as far away from him as east is from west and remembers it not against you, God. Oh, God is so good. Hallelujah. And uh, don't forget um, in 1 John 1, 9, which thank God <laughs> is there for all of us human beings that are so imperfect. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1 John 1.9. That's a good one to commit to memory because it will carry you through your whole life as it does me. <clears throat> okay, and then I was going to do Psalm 91, but I think I'm not going to take the time on air to do that today. But that is another good one. And that is also if you're fearful or afraid or feel like you're under some kind of an attack from any source, Psalm 91 is pray that as a prayer. Like I just showed you, um, do the same thing with Psalm 91. And if you find any Psalms, the Psalms are especially good for that um, because it is David praying in most cases to the Lord from his heart. So it's easy to transpose that over to us praying from our heart. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, that 
that this speaking and praying to the Lord is a way to build your friendship with God. And as a brand new Christian or a, a Christian that wants to grow in your walk, building your friendship with God is core. It's key. It's the root of your relationship. You want to um, learn to talk to the Lord. And I really highly recommend finding 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night if, if you can't spend any more time. And just set that aside and do your prayer time. And uh, just prayer is simply talking to God. And also throughout your day, when you have quiet moments in your car, wherever you are, if you find yourself quiet, start to talk to the Lord just randomly about your day, whatever comes to mind. If you're whole, filled with the Holy Spirit, which by faith you ask the Father to fill you and control you with your His Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, and then you receive the Holy Spirit by faith. That It is not a big, long process. It's not anything that's hard to achieve. It's by faith. The just shall live by faith. And uh, if, if you ha- want to learn more about that, Derek Prince has great teachings on the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit on YouTube. I highly recommend. And um, just walk in the Spirit, stay in the Spirit, and um, talk to the Lord as you go throughout your day. Just make little remarks, ask for His help. Um, just make, just get used to having an ongoing inner conversation. And even out loud, if you're alone, <laughs> I do that all the time now. And it, I remember when that was a goal and I was like, oh, I, I want to be like that, Lord. But it just seems like, oh, only the really holy people would do that. No, that's not true. You just start to do it and it becomes part of you. Hallelujah. It just does. And it just it just sweetens and brings the Lord into your life and it, on a whole new personal level. And he cares about every little thing in your life. Even as one pastor said, oh, I, these people that care, you know, they ask God, which side of their bread to butter. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, you know what? God cares about that too. He cares about everything. That's why he made us. Why do you think we're here? He wanted someone to relate to, to have a friendship with, to have an intimate, close, personal relationship with. Hallelujah. He cares about little things and big things. So um, the next thing I want to talk about today is um, to use your authority. Now, this is another point that I've made in the past, but I'm going to make it again. I want you to use your authority, and more so important, (laughs) the Lord wants you to use your authority. The minute you become a born-again believing Christian, you are now heir to the authority that Jesus leaves us as Christians, as believers, in that we can use his name over all the power of the enemy in Luke ten nineteen, He gives us all authority over all the power of the enemy. And as Henry Groover, great man of God, look him up to blessing. You will be so blessed. Henry Groover, J-R-U-V-E-R. Um, he says, what does all mean? He always says that. What does all mean? If he, if the Lord gives us power over all the power of the enemy, well, what does all mean? And most people say all means all everything. And he's, that's it. That means everything, all there is. So all the power of the enemy, hallelujah. There means there's no power of the enemy that you can think of that will ever come against you that you don't already have power over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in Nazareth. And another thing comes to mind right now. Just remember, Jesus says, I believe it's in Matthew 23 and 24, if I'm not mistaken, it could be, I get Mark and Matthew mixed up sometimes. Please forgive that without me preparing it ahead of time. Jesus said, we can have what we say 
and we can have what we pray, basically. That's boiling it down um, and totally paraphrasing it. But Jesus' own words, we can have what we say and we can have what we pray. And um, if you have all power over, over the enemy and you can have what you say and you have you pray and it's all according to his will and his word, then wow. We're pretty, we're pretty dangerous to the enemy. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to know that, but you have it, new Christian. You have it right now. You got it the moment you believed and received Jesus in your heart and trusted him to be the payment for your sin. You just, you were born again at that moment and you received his authority at that moment, which is something you don't always hear about, but Russ Dizdar emphasizes, he says, new Christians need to learn this right away. They need to know their authority right off the bat and start to use it. And be not afraid. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid of the enemy. That is one of his biggest weapons against us is fear and fear of backlash and retaliation for using our authority. No, use your authority on that too. The way I always do it is I say, whatever the issue is, I'll say in Jesus' name, I bind you, I break your power, I cast you out to the feet of Jesus for whatever is going on, the the issue of the moment. And then I'll say in Jesus' name, I bind all your reinforcements, your backlash, retaliation, spirits, and I put in past, present, and future because God and the, and the devil exist outside of time. There, the devil is bound by time. But in some respects, I believe the Lord showed me that I can say past, present, and future because they have limited knowledge. And if they you cast them out at one time or you bind them up in the present time, they may try to send something to you in the future, or if they know something about you, they may try to do it in the past before you even have a chance to attack them. They'll attack you. Anyway, that's kind of advanced, and I don't want to get off the track on that, but I just throw that in. I bind you, rebuke you, and cast you out, and I bind your reinforcements and your gang members, and your retribution, which means getting back at people, your retribution, retaliation, same idea, and um, backlash spirits, another way of putting it, getting back at people. Okay, so once we bind that and cast those out, well, they don't have anything left. They're pretty much, their um, clip is empty. Their ammo is used up. In Jesus name, but we don't, we do not want to be proud of our authority over the the enemy because that's another trap. The, The word says, even Michael, the archangel didn't boast about his, uh, his power over the enemy, but he, he said, he didn't say He didn't bring a railing accusation against Satan, but he said, Jesus rebuke you, Jesus rebuke you, Satan. So if Michael the archangel does it, we should do it. And we, Jesus said, don't rejoice that you have power over the enemy, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of life, which means you're saved, you're the life is eternal life, and that's your salvation. So we're not to go around boasting about our power over the enemy, no. And it, sometimes you may get tempted to do that, but don't do it, because that's another trap of the enemy. So there's been many things said this morning that I didn't plan on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I wanted to also mention... Um, Again, I I may have mentioned this before also, but be aware of your peace. After you come away from your prayer time with the Lord, you should be filled with the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Hallelujah. And even you may just find that you have a little song in your heart or it's running through your mind. And that is the, the joy of the Lord gives you a song. And the word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
So Henry Groover teaches that we can walk in this peace and in this song. And he says that when he began his career and his ministry back in his, I think he was 18 years old, the Lord said to him, I'm going to lead you by by my peace and a song. And he said, if at any time you find that you've lost that peace and that song, which represents the joy of the Lord and his strength, then go back to the point where you lost it and start again. And I think, oh, what a wonderful way to walk with the Lord. Because even if you're not hearing words, (coughs) you can be guided by the peace, your inward peace. So if that's why the morning time with the Lord is so important. You want to you want to confess your sins, you want to get filled with the spirit, you want to converse with God, you want to put you want to put your concerns and your issues before him. You want to intercede for people, whatever the Holy Spirit puts in your heart. And you want to be filled with his peace and his joy. And then you want to walk in it. And if you at any time in the, your day lose it, go back. If once you become aware of losing it, go back and try to reclaim that, that peace. That's the, the biggest thing for me is realizing all of a sudden it, I become aware like, Oh, I don't feel the peace of the Lord anymore. When did I lose it? And it's like when your headache goes away and you don't remember exactly when it went away, you just realize, wait a minute, that headache's gone. Well, this is a positive thing. We don't want to lose our peace. So I just say, Lord, I'm sorry at some point I lost my peace, but I want to walk in your peace, Lord. I just ask you to give me, fill me again with your peace and your Holy Spirit. And I confess any sin that displeases you. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and your peace that passes all understanding. And then just by faith, say, yes, I receive your peace and I'm walking in it right now. And you will be filled with the peace of God. Because God promises that he will give us his peace. So uh, that's another way to stay in God's will. Because if you do something or you're thinking of making a choice throughout your day, and you think about that choice and you say, wait a minute, every time I think about that choice, I don't feel peaceful anymore. Boom. That's Isn't that great that we can have that as a a guide, and then you don't do it. And that, and you choose the thing that does give you peace. And I have been applying this more and more in my life, even to the small choices that you make a million of throughout a day. And it's just amazing to walk with the Lord on that level. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, and it's so freeing because you're letting him make your choices for you, especially when you, you're not sure what to do, uh, just consider, well, does this line of choice give me peace or a little bit of agitation? Agitation is not of the Lord. So go with the line of choice that gives you peace and joy and the little song may be there, but That is just a really great guideline for everyone, every believer, old and new alike. Praise God. All right. I am going to wrap things up there right now with today's episode, which I'm going to call Build Your Friendship with God and Use Your Authority. All right. God bless you today and use these things in your life and grow in the Lord. God bless you. Bye for now. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app, free for iOS and Android.